This week on Tableau Tip Tuesday, we're going to build on two previous tips for building heat map, heat map calendars, obviously with a little bit of an extra tip as well. So we're going to use this one by Kevin Taylor, but then also we're going to use a little bit of this one by Andy Creeble. I will add both of these to the blog. So what do we mean by this? So we're going to be using date scaffolding for cal calendars. So as you can see here, we've got white boxes where we have had zero sales, which means there has been no records in that data. So why do we do this? So I'm going to show you how to build this first and then show you why you need to do your date scaffolding. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to filter to a specific year on order date. So option drag filters order date to filters and click next. We're just going to do it to the latest year. We're going to option drag order date to rows and we're going to do this by quarter. And then the next one, option drag order date to columns and then we're also going to do this by weekday. Okay, so we're getting a little bit there. So if I click entire view, you can see what's going on. Now we need the week numbers. Option drag order date week. But as you can see, each month is obviously going to have week 1 to 5, but then 6 to 10. And we don't want this, we want to recount for every month that we have. Um, and we also want the every third month across the top. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on here and we're going to create a custom date and do months as date part. And then we're going to right click again and create a group. So this time we're going to just click on the three that we want, the four that we want, sorry, to create those groups. So that would be number one. And then you've got February, May, August, November as group number two. And then the last three as group last four as group number four. So I hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that at the top here. So oh, that didn't save my name. So whenever you're renaming groups, make sure you hit apply first before you um, come out. So make sure you get off the box before you just click OK, because otherwise it doesn't save your name. So now we have each of the months, but as you can see, we've got January, February, and March. So now we're going to do a new calculation called week numbers. And this is going to include a level of detail calculation to get the minimum week back for that specific month or that specific set of months. So we're going to do date part week of order date. And then we're going to minus that from a level of detail calculation which is fixed at the date part month of order date and we're going to fix that at the minimum of the date part week of order date. Now I'm missing one bracket which is at the end here which is our curly to finish our level of detail calculation. So this is bringing back the minimum week number per month and taking that off the week number of the origin the week number that is assigned to that week. So now if I drag that in here, I'm going to make this as a dimension. And then we're going to remove order date, the week of order date. We can put it in the detail for now. And we're going to edit this axis and reverse it. Okay, so, and we're just going to edit again and make sure that it's fixed at minus two. Just then we've got that bit of a gap at the top there. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to add the average number of records onto size. As you can see, each box is getting its own 
um, its own section, but we have some gaps. So first off, I'm just going to make this big, but then we're going to add a border of grey, and then we're going to put sails onto colour. Okay, but then what we want to do as well is we want to add order date of label as um, day. So we still get that day in there. So we want to allow overlapping middle top. No, middle, middle. I'm just going to right align it. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting a little bit closer, but we're missing four and five. What's going on there? Now, this is where that date scaffolding will come in nicely. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Analysis, Table Layout, Advanced, and then tick this, untick this box, which will allow your weekdays to go across the top. And now we're just going to format those so that it is the abbreviation. And we're going to unhide this header, hide that header, hide that header, and then the final thing we're going to do before I do the date scaffolding is the month number, the month name, which is what Andy Creeble showed you. So now what we need to do is we need to create a calculation here called month label. And this is um, looking, just basically picking out the middle of, middle of weekday and putting a point at that, at that specific point there. So we're going to drag, so we're going to say if this equals 4 then minus 2 end and that's all we want on there so we're going to just drag that in to here and we're going to put this as an average and then we're going to change this back to um, Gantt and then also just change this one to a circle and reduce the size and take that off color, take that off, take that off and um, command shift weekday, it, no sorry we want month so we want option drag month onto our label so now you can see we're kind of getting somewhere so what we want to do is dual axis and synchronize. Now our Gantt's have gone a little bit strange and that's because the sizing has gone but we don't want that circle to go higher so again we'll just reduce that and um, we need to take the average number of sales or the average number of records off size because otherwise it's going to keep doing that silly me. So now you can see we've got one month label and I'm just going to center that and remove the color. So now the final bit of this is obviously to hide those headers that we don't want. Um, so you can see we've got gaps in our data, but actually we still want to be able to see those numbers of days and maybe use them in calculations to count them that, of the times that we have nulls. So we're going to go to the data source. We're going to hit add a new Excel file. Now this could be a database, this could be something that's updated automatically with new dates, but we're going to go to date scaffold. Now what this is, is literally a list of dates of all of 2018. So it's quite an easy data set and all we're going to do is we're going to say order date is equal to date. But then we're going to do a full outer join so it gets both sides of the data set and um, it also brings back those as nulls so now nothing has changed but that's because we're still using order date and those order dates will now be null for the ones that we're missing so what we're going to do is we're going to replace the references hit right click hit replace and then change it just to date and hit ok now you can see that we've got our numbers back, which is great, but we've got some issues here as it looks like we still have sales there when we don't. So we're going to create a new calculated field called actual sales. And then 
if um, is null sales, then we're going to put it to minus one else sales. End. Okay, and then we're going to again right click on sales, default, um, replace references, and then just replace it with actual sales. So now we're getting a little bit better here. But what we want to do is we want to edit this colour and we want to say that that is white and hit OK. Again, it's not really going white until you use full colour range. And now you can see that that white bit is at the beginning. If I hit apply, we now get rid of the colour of it because now we can definitely see that those are zeros or that there's been nothing on that day. So the final thing that we want to do is we want to clean up the tooltips. And again, um, so what we're going to do here is instead of the actual sales, we're just going to have sales on tooltip so that we can see what happens. And then if you right click on the sum of sales and format, we want to go to the pane and change this to a zero so that we can see that it's got zero sales on there. And then finally, we want order date on the tooltip, but we want the full order date and again we want to format that so that it is the standard long date and then what we can do from here is we can just clean this up so we want to delete all of that delete that and delete everything but the sales and untick those two categories there. So now we have, um, we don't want to use order date actually, we want to make sure that we're using date, not order date. And change that back to um, an attribute so that we have it and again just format this so if we go to format pane uh, dates as standard long dates. Now you can see that we've got all of our dates there. So you can see that we've got zero sales on those specific dates. This is useful for headcount analysis to count how many days that you've got that you didn't have any sales for.